Hello and welcome to <laughs> Mini Soap 46. I don't know. We can't take these introductions seriously. It's 46, 46. man. 46. This time uh, we're going to be talking about theme park <laughs> and actually going to them. Remember that, eh? No. Remember actually going to a theme park? No. Well, you should do because it happened the other day. Yeah. So we went to Poulton's Park, the home of Peppa Pig World, Yay. on Monday. Uh, for the brand new grand opening of Tornado Springs, the park. And the season. And the season, yeah. So UK theme parks opened on the 12th of April. Uh, that was when our government said that they could open. Yeah. Uh, with COVID restrictions, of course. So, you know, reduced capacities, cleaning. Social distancing. Yeah, all that kind masks, of mumbo jumbo. You know the drill. Yeah. So that was... Um, Opening day for the park, but then also opening day of the park's new area, Tornado Springs, which was meant to open in spring of 2020. Yeah. But obviously didn't. <laughs> because other stuff was going on at that time. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't finished, so they decided to defer it a year yeah. uh, until now. Um, so we went. How was it? It was good. It was kind of weird. Like, it felt like we'd never been away once we got there. And I was saying to you as well, like, I think... Because obviously the pandemic's been here for like a year or over a year now, masks and social distancing feel so normal that when we were at the park, it just felt like a normal theme park day. Yeah. Even though obviously like there was a lot of stuff that was different to how it would be if there wasn't a pandemic. But yeah, it just felt like really normal. It did. It did. It was good to be back. It was. It was um interesting going to the opening day. Obviously, you know, opening days have... Well, first days of the season is always interesting, but then yeah. combined with the opening of a new the area world. and new park, yeah, um, it's even more kind of special. Yeah. So we got there and uh, had to wait. They do like a little, well, not rope drop, but almost a <laughs> rope drop. They let people into the park early, I imagine, to stop people like crowding the entrance. Because mm, when we went last year in July, we were queuing like in the entrance area, in the plaza. A little bit, yeah. And there was like... Quite long queues for each of the like turns. Turn yeah, starties. relatively. Um, but this time they let us in, and then we queued like in the on the paths of the main like park. Yeah, exactly. Bit. Yeah, so waited for ten p.m. ten p.m. ten a.m. ten p.m. <laughs> um, and then they just released everyone, and pretty much everyone went straight everyone to the new in. area. Yeah. Um, of course. But it was fine at the end of the day, like. The capacity that they had set for that day was seemingly a lot lower than normal. Yeah. Um, because... Or no, normal COVID, we mean. Yeah, because even, you know, everyone rushed to the new area and rushed to ride the new flagship roller coaster, the Storm Chaser. The queue said it went up to 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't true. It was like no. 15 minutes. Yeah. And then by the end of the day, it was walk-on. Yeah. So the queues were, like, tiny on the very first day. Yeah. But I think as well, like... Because when we went last year in July, it was quite packed considering there was a pandemic. Mm. Um, but it was only really in Peppa Pig World that it was packed. Yeah. And I don't know whether it wasn't as packed this time because they reduced the numbers again. Because they kind of like got a better gauge of how many people they could have in the space. Um, or if <laughs> the enthusiasts had taken over so much that there was less people in the park that wanted to be in Peppa Pig in the first place. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Whereas on a normal day, when Tornado Springs hasn't just opened, there would be a higher percentage of like fam young families. Whereas on Monday, it felt like pretty much 50% of the people there were like enthusiasts. Mm -hmm, yeah. I do think it was a combination of both. Yeah. And looking at the queue times over the past few days, it's been like 40 minutes for just all the rides, generally. Yeah, yeah. So if, I think for some reason they did lower the capacity of opening day. Right. Maybe it's like a trial run or something, you know, just mm -hmm. to kind of gauge how it all goes. Um, or maybe they just wanted to seem less busy for the first, you know, people going there. Yeah. Um, but no, it, it was kind of like the perfect day to go, to be honest. It was, and it was like the perfect amount of people in the park. For sure. Yeah. So nothing was too crazy. We ended up going on everything as many times as we pretty much wanted to. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about the new area. What, mm -hmm. what, what would you describe it as? Well, the theme is like American... Is it meant to be a desert? I don't know. Yeah, like a desert town, Like I guess. a town, yeah. It's so very like reminiscent classic... of, like, Cars. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's like Cars the movie. Yeah. Um... As opposed to Cars the car. Yeah. 
<laughs> as opposed to just cars. Yeah. Um, yeah, I liked it. It's you can tell that they're getting better and better, or they're spending more money on yeah. these areas. Like compared to Lost Kingdom, which is their dinosaur place, it's a step up again from that kind For of sure. stuff. And I like the theme. It's cool. It's not very like out of the box, but I think they what they did with it was nice. Um, yeah, like everywhere you looked, it was there was signage. There was um, what's the word for like things? Theming. Yeah, like bits of theming everywhere. Mm. Um, everything you could see was Tornado Springs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was well put together. I think you're right. Like it's a relatively generic theme, but at the same time, like. If you you know if you want a safe bet for a theme park area, you, you choose the generic themes because people know what they are. Yeah. You don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to explain that this is an American town. Yeah. You know, in in, in the, somewhere in the desert or whatever. It's obvious because of the all of the kind of um, cliche. Yeah. Things theming there. elements. Yeah. It's like Lost Kingdom, you know, dinosaurs, Jurassic whatever. World, isn't it? Exactly. It's yeah. like. All cliche stuff, but at that point in time, it's very easy to gauge. Well, I know what this is, yeah. and I get that. Um, so, I'm and not I think surprised. for like a, f- a family park or like a quite a young family park, yeah, in a way, it's better to go for those like themes that everybody knows because, yeah, imagine a for example, like all of Alton Towers kind of themes are quite dark, and you can't really do that. Well, none of the areas are particularly themed anyway, the rides are like individual, yeah, but if you but... took a more, say, out-of-the-box theme like The Smiler, you, you can't really do that because, A, they're all kids, yeah, exactly. and, B, it's quite hard to exp- for a young child to get what's going on. For sure. Whereas this, this, you know, dinosaur land, they get that. America, they get that, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. they're like cars. So it was, <laughs> you yeah. know... It's very easy to kind of understand what's going on. Yeah, which is what they're going for. Definitely. And it works. Yeah, for sure. Um, as you said, there's nice little bits of like theming elements all around. There's like traffic lights that cycle yeah. through, you know, the colours. Um, lots of like little bits and bobs, power lines above your head, uh, things moving. <laughs> they had fake cacti. Oh god, yeah. That looked really plastic, they but were they were very, funny. They were literally like fake, yeah, fake cacti next to like real plants. Yeah. <laughs> and it just looks like, well, this is plastic. <laughs> And this is real. Yeah, but the overall Fine, effect of it all was like really cool. They yeah. had like the huge Route sixty three on the floor on the road. Sixty three, mate. It's eighty three. Eighty three, is it? Right? Is that the, actually? It's the when that's when Portland's Park became a theme uh, park. Of course. I think it is eighty three. It's eighty something. Maybe yeah. eighty six. Must be eighty three. No, I think it's eighty three. I don't know. Yeah, like Who knows what number it is? Yeah, I mean, yeah, and so it's this new area, um, but it's kind of half new and half older rides that they've reincorporated mm. into the new area. Which um, ones are old? Because I, I don't really know what they had there before because obviously we only visited last year when it was all boarded up. Can't remember. You don't know. Um, I know Fair. Buffalo Falls was there. I don't okay. know if the driving school was there. It must not have been. I feel right. like no because that's really like... Yeah, it's pretty well done. Yeah. So maybe it was just Buffalo Falls. The train is obviously there and they kept mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. I don't know about the tractors. Maybe the tractors were there. Maybe. Could be. I'm not that, like, knowledgeable. But what I do know is they added, like, the two main big rides of that area. Yeah. Storm Chaser, the Muck Rides spinning coaster. Yeah. And then Cyclonator, the Zamperla Discovery. Um, and those are the two, like, main big, big boy rides, as we'll call <laughs> it. Uh, but there's also the driving school, whatever that's called, mm-hmm. no idea. And then a pair of twin kitty drop towers. Yeah. Like, the classic ones you see at every the theme park ever. Ones. Yeah, uh, which, yeah, do well. What are they called? They're not high towers, are they? They're not frog are they? are they? No, 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 no. I'm trying to think <laughs> of what they're called. Something towers. Tornado towers. No. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and then there's that tractor ride where it's like you sit in a big tractor and it yeah. goes around really slowly on yeah. a track. But then, yeah, they also incorporated Buffalo Falls, which is like a little water side. You've got a raft and you go down a, you know, thing that kind of undulates up and down yeah. the slide that undulates up and people down people seem to really like that they yeah. were proper queuing up for that exactly um, but no obviously the first thing that we did was go straight onto the Storm Chaser yeah the spinning coaster and it's a stock layout it's Sierra Sidewinder which was a custom coaster for Knott's Berry Farm okay so Zach was telling me that the whole first section is built around another ride at Knott's Berry Farm oh but they just bought it, the same layout well obviously because it's cheap yeah you know it, it's way cheaper 
to go, I'll have that because it's all of the done. all of the technical data yeah. is done. It's yeah. sorted. They just need to fabricate the track and send it on over. Yeah. Um so that's what they did. They when I was, when we were speaking to Lawrence, he explained or to me that um they basically said, We want this and basically found the best place to put it in. Yeah. You know, orientation, where in the park it was gonna go. I see. And they found the best place for it to fit mm-hmm. and then built everything else around it. Okay. So, because I was going to say, it does feel quite well placed and integrated into the whole area. So I guess building it from that, like putting the coaster in first and then making the area yeah. around it. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, for those who don't really know, the main coaster is kind of like in two sections. You've got the main bulk, which is quite compact yeah. together. But then you've also got the, the first section off the lift hill, which kind of, it drops off the lift hill, then does almost a 270 degree turn. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of away from everything else, and then it like dives down into the rest of the layout. Mm-hmm. So at, at Tornado Springs, that main beginning section is raised up above the path. Yeah. Which you know I really like when when parks do that. Mm-hmm. I kind of really like the fact that you can look up and go, oh, there's the coaster. Yeah. You know I'm a big fan of Galactica for that exact reason, mm-hmm. especially that turn that's right over the path. Yeah. It's just nice. You know, it's nice to see that interaction, and it's a bit more interesting than having a coaster behind a fence if that makes sense yeah um so i really like that about it but the ride was surprisingly good yeah but i don't know like we were saying on the day obviously we haven't ridden anything for ages no, of course. and i don't know if we were just like proper well, worn out by it all it's you know like it's a family coaster so you know take that with a pinch of salt it isn't you know the next steel vengeance or no, Terran no, 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 or whatever no. you you know your favorite ride is but I think definitely that helix was quite intense. Mm, for sure. There was a couple of other, mov- other moments where I was like, oh, well, hello. Yeah, and it just depends on how much spinning you get as well, right? Yeah, because going into it, I wasn't expecting it to be intense or thrilling. I was expecting it to be fun, mm-hmm. which it was fun, but then also it had like little pops of intensity, which was nice. Mm-hmm. And I think um, for like kids who have grown up going to Pottery Park, ideal. it's yeah, it is spot on because... It's a fun ride, but they still get an, kind of an introduction to like how coasters can mm. be the further you move up the, you know. The One ladder. thing it isn't is janky. It's very no, kind of smooth. smooth. Everything's smooth, and even the intense sections. It's yeah. not like boom, here's no, intense. No, 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 it's no. like gradual. Yeah. Here's your more bit more intensity, yeah. and then we're coming out of that intensity. Yeah. You know, um, so it, it's like it's nowhere near comparable to the other spinny coasters we have in the UK. No. Like Spinball. But in a way, I much prefer. The Mac ones? I don't. You don't? <laughs> I Every day of the week, I would You're rather joking. go on Spinball. Why are you obsessed with Spinball Wizard, no, mate? The, the, so, for the exact reason that Storm Chaser is good for Poland's is the jank. I like the jank. I like the fact that Spinball is stupidly chaotic. It's painful. And painful. I like that. Right? This is such a good example of what coasters we like. Yeah. You like Spinball Wizard. And I like in, in terms of the Storm coaster, Chaser. obviously Storm Chase has a much nicer design, right? And yeah. aesthetic. Yeah. But if I had the two options of riding one or the other, I'd ride Spinball. Interesting. I'd a hundred percent go for Storm Chaser. If I owned a park myself and I had to decide You'd I, put a Mac in. I would put Storm Chaser in yeah. every day of the week. Yeah. Like that is the clear, obvious thing to yeah. do. Way I, better. It's such a good choice, especially oh, for yeah. that park. Like it, it's incredibly rewritable as yeah. well. Yeah, exactly. Because every time is different well, <laughs> unless you're us and you get put in the same seat. Yeah, we kept in getting, the same <laughs> We kept formation. going put, getting put in the front and a lot of the times we were the only people in the front. Yeah. So then the, so the we got train the same didn't spin. spin. And it pretty much followed <laughs> the layout, so it almost wasn't a spinning coaster yeah. for like half of our rides. Yeah. But then, fortunately, you know, later on in the day, we managed to get into other seats and, like, did, near yeah. the back and actually did start to spin. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that was funny. But, no, it's very re-ridable, very enjoyable, you know, a, a good stepping stone coaster, it is, as you say. Like, it's definitely now the best coaster at the park, yeah. most intense coaster at the park. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know, kind of, like, perfect, really. It's yeah. a perfect coaster for them. But what about Cyclator, the other one? There's Ampella... Discovery, which is yeah. like a big swing that spins, right? See, now I didn't really think about the fact that it's quite thrilling before everyone started talking about it on Monday. Why? Because to me, it's just a flat ride. What? But then when you think, because I don't think of flat rides as being like, I just didn't really think about it. Okay. 
But then when I thought about it, I was like, yeah, actually, some, that's like, insane for like a family park. Most big flat rides are pretty yeah, thrilling. But I just didn't really think about it before. Yeah. No, it's it's a weird move. But then. But it's not. It's quite. It's quite a low down. That style of ride is quite low down in terms of like it's not you know a drop tower where you face the floor yeah. or something like it's that. It's not too intimidating. Yeah. I think it's the worst. It looks before. fine, but actually when we went on it, it was quite mad. Yeah. Um, we've done a few like intimate versions, you know, intimate gyro swings. Like pe- they're all pendulum rights, right? So they yeah. swing left and right and then spin as you go around. Spinning, yeah. Um, and we've done Maelstrom at Drayton Manor and Loki at Lisa Berg. And Flip Flop And Flip Flop. No idea who makes that one. Don't um, know. But... This one, though, Cyclonator, was like... I don't know what it was. More intense. It was... Definitely. It felt so high as well. I Did it think, feel that high to you? I don't think it felt that high. I think what it was is... The angle that it reaches was perhaps greater. Yeah. It felt like we were like up the top. Loki of the thing. is definitely higher, like much bigger. I think it's like okay. 40 meters high or something like that. Um, but yeah, I think Psychomator just <laughs> the angle that it reaches is higher, so then it feels higher. It feels like you're more upside down, yeah. especially when you're at the top. Um, but yeah, what, what I found was that it kind of like a lot of the others seem to just fall back towards the ground you know you reach the high point and then it falls yeah whereas psychometer it feels like you're being pulled towards the ground i okay. don't know if you felt like that it's just a bit more oomph yeah it's like you're being dragged it was powerful exactly yeah you're not free falling you're being dragged across okay um like a mechanical type thing rather than just gravity doing it yeah i mean the others aren't just gravity right they well obviously, yeah obviously but the yeah, the San Paolo one the just feels felt more, like it, yeah. Yeah, it feels more intense. Um, and it is more intense. And I will say, we actually felt sick on after the second one. I actually felt sick on the first one. On the first one? Yeah. No, no, I was fine on the first one. No, nah, it got me straight away. Um, the second one, we had an ice cream. Um, we had an ice cream in the afternoon, which was error, error one. Um, and then when we went on that again, like kind of immediately after, didn't we? I'd say it was within an hour of eating the ice cream. Well, within an hour, that's like and ages. Yeah, but don't come up with an excuse. Okay, but why would we feel sick? Maybe just the amount of rides we've been no, on by know. that point. Oh, I, I never feel it. sick no, on them I know. ever. And yeah. I was on it thinking I'm actually going to throw up here. Yeah, no, you don't. <laughs> you, you don't. But yeah, yeah I know what you mean. Um, the other thing I'd say about it is I'm not a fan of the restraint at all. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> the restraint caused me to kind of go into panic mode because. A, I was feeling sick, and B, when I was in the air on the second time, it clicked down one more. Yeah, what was it just and tight it on the so chest? It was so tight on my chest, and I was like, oh my god, I just, yeah, I was panicking. For anyone who's tall, the restraint stops on your shoulders, so it doesn't come right. down on me anymore because my shoulders are in the way, oh. which means that it hurts my shoulders. Yeah, but that's better than feeling like you can't get out and you're trapped. I mean, mm, at yeah, least but you, you know can push you... up. No, no, that. but you know when you try and breathe and yeah, it's so yeah. tight that you yeah. can't extend your like lungs yeah. out anymore. And also, like when when it's those restraints where they come down automatically oh, for yeah. you, it's so scary. Like I'd rather pull it down myself. I don't know why, but they're like, oh, put your head back. The restraints coming down. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, but no, it, it's yeah. But it's it was not the definitely most like, but it's more intense. Yeah, for sure. I liked it. It's a good flat ride. Even yeah, though, like, it made me feel sick and panicky, but I still really yeah, like it. Yeah, I liked it, it as well. Um, but as you said, you know, it's way more thrilling. It, it It's more thrilling than Storm Chaser. Definitely. It's the most thrilling ride in that park. Yeah. Which, as you said, is kind of strange for a family park with kiddie bikes. Strange, but... But... They're obviously planning something, aren't they? Well, no, I think they're not They're not particularly planning. I think they're testing. They're testing the waters out exactly. with a flat ride, which isn't that expensive. Exactly. Smart moves. It is. Um, and I think if they did happen to extend in the future and put more thrilling coasters in, then it fits with what they've already started to do. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Well, you know, hopefully we see them continue to push the envelope. The, the, the kind of good thing, honestly, is that the height requirement of really thrilling rides has been falling mm-hmm. more recently because of development in r- restraints, right? Mm-hmm. So they can accommodate smaller people Mm -hmm. um which is good news for parks like polters who are family parks yeah because then more people can ride these more thrilling roller coasters yeah i really do hope that they just keep notching it up 
you know, sort Slightly. of to take mm-hmm. one step above Storm Chaser. Yeah. You know, so probably, you know, another non inverting family coaster. Yeah. Perhaps a launch. Mm-hmm. You know, but something just a bit more than Storm Chaser. And then after that, you know, they could really notch it up again and do some sort of tame, tamer thrill coaster. You know, a proper big thrill coaster. That's, like what though? I don't know. Like Galactica level? Oh, God, no. That's what I'm saying. Like, what's an in between? Oh, you mean Galactica level intensity? No, I just mean what could they have? What could they have? You'd probably just want some sort of sit down looping coaster. Something like, something like a Gertz Infinity, not the Smiler, but like, like a Eurofighter, but the newer versions. That's what I mean. Okay. You can make a Eurofighter, obviously not Eurofighter, but an Infinity coaster, but one that isn't isn't too crazy and mm-hmm. isn't too intense. Yeah. But it's a compact layout. It'll pack a punch and it'll get the job done yeah. for a relatively cheap price. But I think even if they stayed at a level slightly above Storm Chaser in terms of like the future developments... It would still be good. It would be solid. Yeah. I, I only hope that they continue to expand, you know, because then we have another park that's pumping out exactly. a mixture of rides. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you look at the most successful theme parks in the world... They try and cater for everyone. Everyone. Disney, mm-hmm. and then in Europe, you know, Europa Park, still tries to cater to, to thrill seekers. Yeah. It still has thrilling roller coasters. Yeah. So, you know, if Poulton's wants to expand further down the line and build more of a reputation for everyone, then mm-hmm. it's the way to do it, isn't it? Yeah. Obviously not just pumping out thrill rides, but pumping out a mixture of But rides. if they did it like... Because most parks, correct me if I'm wrong, but most parks start off with like family slash thrill stuff and then go or not then go but they only have a small like young family section it it depends what the park kind of was to begin with yeah but i feel like they've got the young family section nailed completely yeah that they if they kept expanding out like more thrilling kind of stuff they'd have a monopoly on like all all areas rather than like you know see bb's land just banged on the side yeah they've got pepper pig like they've got so much stuff for younger families Mm -hmm. and this is it that's what i mean if they can build an area for everyone yeah then they're you know they're it's ideal yeah um and you've you're really catered to everybody it's kind of a different situation yeah i don't think most i think most parks have built almost all the parks we see now more recently have been built like they just add a mixture of rights in Mm-hmm. You know, it's not, you know, um, it's not them saying, oh, we're just kids park or we're just thrill seekers. It's like, yeah. here's a mixture of rides, something for that person, something for that person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, whereas obviously Poulton's knows who their target audience is mm-hmm. and is catering to them. Mm-hmm. Except obviously more recently we've seen that change as they try and, well, I think the big part of Poulton's park is that they're trying to expand outside of Peppa Pig. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a reason that, they've looked to expand with a brand new area instead of expanding Peppa Pig. Mm-hmm. They could have. That that land is right next to Peppa Pig. Yeah. They could have just could you know, have been Peppa, Peppa Pig did it all yeah. and had like more Peppa Pig rides. But they didn't. Why? Because A, they've already smashed it with Peppa. Well, yeah, they've but you got, can always expand it. Yeah, but they've got enough there. It's big mm. enough. It's got enough variety. There's enough going on with Peppa on its own that it's successful already. And B... We don't want to be committing to Peppa Pig for the rest of our lives. Like, Peppa's going to run out soon. And this, this is it. Well, whether it runs out soon or not is different, but it's that commitment. Yeah. Obviously, you know, you don't want to put egg, all your eggs in one basket. That's yeah. not how you do it. You expand. Mm-hmm. People go to Polton's Park for Peppa Pig. Mm-hmm. Polton's Park want people to go because it's Polton's Park. Just Polton's Park, yeah. Exactly. Because it has a mixture of rides and a mixture of different cool, areas. Cool areas, Exactly. Yeah. Which I think... If they carry on, it will definitely happen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Especially, you know, in more of a us nerd sense, Paul's yeah. Park, you know, kind of put themselves on, on the, the UK map now. Yeah. Um, with Lost Kingdom. Yeah. But now it's really it's on the radar. It's on the radar. Exactly. Uh, now people will go because there's enough to ride, yeah. even if and you're a nerd. also it has such a good reputation as being yeah. like a nice park to for go sure. to. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just a nice day, wasn't it? It's interesting also that they're already building an, an extension to Tornado Springs. Yeah. So they've got a new roller coaster. I, th- I think it's um, Barnyard Flyer, maybe. I don't okay. know. Something along that line. 
Um, we don't know the exact type of coaster yet, but it definitely will be a family, like a children's coaster. Mm-hmm. You know, nothing Storm Chaser, more... Like the dragon at Legoland. Well, tamer. More like Octonauts, but a bit, okay. more, a, bit a step up from Octonauts, probably. Okay. Um, so, yeah, something that families can ride. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, they're building that behind Psychomator, so it will be a part of Tornado Springs. And, again, not Peppa Pig, Tornado Springs. Mm-hmm. But it's really interesting to see that that's on the plans. You yeah. Know, that's on the radar. Um and allegedly they wanted to open Tornado Springs in 2020 and that new coaster, the family kitty coaster in 2021. Mm-hmm. But obviously everything's been pushed back a year. Yeah. So it should, I guess, open next year. Um, but Interesting. It, but yeah, it's very, very good news that even in this climate, they're still... I was going to say, like, they're still investing solidly. Yeah. No worries at all. Yeah, exactly. Portland Park is like the definition of a success story. Yeah. Basically They've going... They've done it. Through, yeah, I mean... They've gone from, you know, being in this park, like any generic family theme park, yeah. to here's Peppa Pig. And now look at what they've done, you know, yeah. in the years since Peppa Pig, they've expanded so massively mm-hmm. and it's obviously working out for them. So hopefully they continue to expand. Yeah. And if they do, it's only good competition. You know, they're not that far away from the Merlin Parks in London, like yeah. Chesington. It's like an hour and a half, maybe, or an hour and a bit. Mm-hmm. So they're definitely competing with them. Yeah. So it's all, it should be all good news. Smashed it. Absolutely exactly. smashed it. But no, Tornado Springs, really good area. Um, Definitely worth checking out if you haven't been to Portland's Park. Yeah. As it's just said. a nice day out. So they've got animals there. They've yeah. got, you know, Lost Kingdom to check out. There's like three rides in there, right? More than three, yeah. So yeah, there's quite a lot going on. Obviously, if you're a fan of Peppa Pig, you'll absolutely love it. Um, we actually got to see Peppa Pig in real life. What, and George? And George. Um, it was hilarious. And, yeah, it's just nice, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Definitely. It's just a, a park that you can... like. I, I The parks that I like the most are ones that you can just kind of chill in. Yeah. And have that, like, almost downtime. Yeah. And you can at Paul's Park, for sure. Yeah. So, definitely it's recommend going. It's lovely. It is lovely. But, uh, yeah, Storm Chaser. There you go. Solid. Solid ride. <laughs>